I thank God for giving me this opportunity to share my testimony. And I pray that this will encourage all of us to keep on trusting the Lord and keep on serving Him. I come from a family, ancestral worship family, a very small family, four of us only, my younger sister, two years younger than me. My first contact with Christianity was when I was in primary school. And uh, I live in uh, Albert House, overlooking the church in Princep Street. In those days, it was called the Sai Mia Teng. And every Sunday, without fail, the bell, the church bell will ring. And I was very curious to, to want to know what's going on there. Then came Christmas, and one occasion where I really see a lot of children in there and singing, and, uh, and they were all well dressed and singing carols. So I actually begged my parents, my mom especially, to allow me to go in the church there to see what's going on. And um, they, my mom did not agree to, to what I wanted. So that was my last contact with Christianity until after my national service when the Lord brought me to Himself through another contact and through the Gospel. As we all know that Singaporeans have to go through national service and that was what I went through at the age of 18. I went for national service in 1971 and I was there for two and a half years completing my NS in January 1974. Now upon my completion of my NS, I began to work in a company called Westpal, which is a construction company as a pay clerk. And that was there that I was given the gospel through my boss, an accountant uh, by the name of Geraldine. She was from Galilee Bible Presbyterian Church and uh, she gave me the gospel. And at that time, I was attending a Roman Catholic Church at that time. And I listened to the gospel that she gave me. She invited me to Galilee BP Church and that was where I began to hear more about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then she gave me something which really was a turning point of my understanding of Christianity. She gave me a bookmark and the bookmark was on the Ten Commandments. It was during one occasion when I was attending the Saturday Mass in the Novena that I saw everybody was actually bowing down to worship and pray to the idols. And then I was reminded of the bookmark in my diary. So when I took it out and began to read it, and that really caused me to be convicted that it was not right to, to bow down to the graven images. It was a, a struggle at first, but then I, I began to realize that that was the right thing to do. I saw everybody bow down and uh, I, I just couldn't bow down. I just sat there where I was and the usher came to me and very gently asked me to bow down. I, I look at I look at him and said, I shake my head and said, no, I will not do that. And then I got up and I walked out of the church, and that was the last time I went to Novena. Now, having been saved by the grace of God, that doesn't mean that I had no struggle. I went through a period of struggle trying to get rid of my smoking habit. I would um, buy a stick of cigarette in those days, only five cents, <laughs> one stick of uh, downhill. And I took one path, but then I felt that it was not right, and I threw it away. Then at the, the, the other road corner, I came to another shop, and I had to, I see the cigarette on, the, the, the shelf there, I wanted to buy another cigarette. And so I buy another cigarette, took another puff, and then threw it away. The reason why I'm doing that because I was taught in the scripture. After coming to know Jesus, my body belongs to Christ and the Holy Spirit lives in me. And that was how I prayed to the Lord. And it was a simple prayer. How did I manage to overcome the struggle? Through this prayer. I pray that the Lord help me, help me to quit smoking. And one thing I ask is that, Lord, please help me to hate smoke. And the Lord answered my prayer. And to this day, I just couldn't stand smoke. And that was how the Lord enabled to me to, to have victory over that habit which I had at that time. Praise the Lord. By the grace of God, I know the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal saviour in the middle of 1974 when I was 21 years of age. And then in 1975, I was baptised at Easter at Galilee BP Church. And then around September the same year, 1975, I went on board this ship called the NV Logos for a short-term missionary trip. And the reason why I went on that board, uh, on that ship, was because of a missions conference that was organized and I went there. And it was there that the Lord began to speak to my heart. The Lord somehow 
by His grace convicted me of my sin, and I prayed to the Lord that He will open the way, if it was His will, for me to join the Logos. And it was not easy because I was the only son, as we know, and my parents, they were not believers at that time. And my parents, and my mom especially, even though she did not agree at first, but eventually she tried to help me. She actually packed my bag and put some ginseng and all these other things in my bag for me to go on board the long course. And I know that the Lord is working in their hearts one thing at a time. And then came in 1975 in September, that's a time when I actually went on board the ship. And I know that the, the believers in the, my brethren in Galilee BP Church, they were also praying for me and they, they sent me off actually on that day. Now a little bit about this ship, MV Logos. What is this ship all about? This ship is actually organized by OM called Operation Mobilization. And the, 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 the aim of this Logos ship is really to reach out to people. And that's the reason why you see the three big word, word there. EBE, Educational Book Exhibits. So this ship was sailed around the world from port to port, the heading of an educational food fair and exhibit. It had all kinds of books. At the same time, there are also Bible and tracts and all the other things. So every time when the ship lands at a port, we will have church meetings, we will go to the churches, be able to give our testimony and give the gospel. Sunday, we have uh, people preaching. Some of us on board the ship will go over. And uh, by the way, this ship, there are about 140 of us. Every one of us are believers in Jesus Christ. And that's, that helps us to really be united in one. The life on board the ship is, is really something very challenging. And uh, the importance is to have everyone close with the Lord. And so the ship family divide, divided into many small groups with uh, family haze. And so we were together studying God's Word and reading God's Word and praying together. And uh, all of us on board has a job to do. I was a pantry boss. A pantry boss served food. And the food is always brought up from the galley by a lift. And I was the one to distribute the food out. And I have a team of 10 ladies. And these 10 ladies are from different countries. And some of them are very, very good at serving. And they told me, Frank, you can go and sleep, we will do the rest. But there are some who are said uh, that please help me, we don't know this and don't know that. But this is all part of the training. All of us are learning. We are, we are patient with one another, we help one another. And so the ship went on that way. So there's a family of God's people traveling from place to place, learning about discipleship, learning more about God. At the same time, when we arrive at the port, we have the opportunity to go on shore, give the gospel, be it through evangelism or through the churches or just selling books. And so people come to the ship. That's how the ministry went on. Thank God for that. I remember in 1975, September, when I went on board the ship, it was a very scary experience at first in the sense that I felt that I was all alone. And the first night when I was on board the ship, I really looked out on the port side of the ship and looking at the sky and the sea. I was wondering where the Lord is going to lead me. And I feel a bit like Abraham in those days when he obeyed the Lord, but he didn't know where the Lord would lead him. But the point is that he trusted in the Lord. So I thank God that um, He gave me the faith to trust Him. And I just con commit my whole life to the Lord and said, Lord, you just lead me. I'm going to follow you as you enable me to do that. And then on board the ship, we went through different challenges and uh, many dangers as, as well. And as you know, that uh, the ship sailed from Singapore to uh, Sri Lanka and then went through the Suez Canal and went to the Mediterranean Sea. And then after that, we went to, uh, went to Spain, Portugal and round up all the way to, to Britain. And you know that place is a place called the Bay of Biscay. The Bay of Biscay is very famous for what? For storms. And uh, it was at the Bay of Biscay that uh, we faced many dangers. The Bay of Biscay is famous for storm. And uh, sailors call this Bay of Biscay the Valley of Death. It is one of the most challenging and most feared body of water because the wave can come up to very high and many vessels actually went down. And I remember the time when we were at Bay of Biscay. One night, the, the ship actually went through the storm. And the captain uh, actually took the ship to face the wave. It was 60 feet. And the ship was actually bopping up and down, pitching and rolling at the same time. I, I remember at the back uh, at the, of the ship, I was we were all praying to the Lord help because we can see that the ship was actually creaking. Like going to break into two, and uh, thank God that we survived. And then we hear later that actually 
around the vicinity, some smaller vessel actually went down. And uh, the director of uh, this ship, uh, George Verbal, he, he was not on board the ship, but he was in uh, London at that time. And he was very concerned because at one time he couldn't get any communication to the ship at all because it was cut off. So they were all praying and then um, thank God that uh, when communication was resumed, uh, it was found that uh, we were actually safe. And that so was a great answer to prayer. And here again, you see the Lord preserved us and the Lord kept us. And that was how we continued on the, the journey. After I came back, from uh, the Logos to Singapore, I realized I need to go deeper into God's Word. And that's the reason why I enrolled into Singapore Bible College and took a diploma course for three years. And then following that, I joined Far Eastern Bible College. That is our, our, mother, our mother BP Church uh, College at that time, under uh, Dr. Timothy To. And I graduated there with a degree and I remember the time when uh, we were in Galilee Church. Dr. To used to have a prayer meeting on Saturday morning in his home in St. Andrew's Road. And so a lot of pastors, we were gathered there in the morning about 8.15 to have a prayer, a prayer meeting together. And on one of the Saturday morning, I remember fetching Reverend Anthony Tan in my car to go to the prayer meeting. And as you know, what happened was my car was not a new car, it was quite an old car, but I have a new brake. One of my church brothers, who is a mechanic, told me, hey, Pastor, your brake is not good enough. Let me give you a power brake, a real power brake. And he actually installed a power brake for me. And it was really effective. So, when I was nearing St. Andrew, Road, St. Andrew Road and going to turn right into St. Andrew Road, I somehow hit the curb. And when I hit the curb, my instinctive reaction was to step on the brake. And I did it. And what happened was the whole car went turtle. There was no car behind. And that really was really, that really saved us. And I was actually not upside down because my seatbelt did not fasten well. But Reverend Anthony Tan was upside down because he, he actually was very faithful putting on his, his seat belt. But the thing is that we came out of it, a little bit of petrol was actually leaking. So, you know, it could have just someone hit and the whole thing would just burst in the fire, but we didn't. And the Lord just sped off, sped me, sped him. And then when the pastors uh, in Dr. To's house knew that this has happened, they came rushing up. And so we were there. That's how we have pictures with Reverend Heng and, and um, how they witnessed the, the accident, but actually God's protection upon us. And that is really something we really thank God for. I really thank the Lord for His goodness and mercy toward me. As I look back on how the Lord has kept me and led me and preserved me, I can clearly see the footprint of his hand in my life. Through the thick and the thin, the difficult situation, every step of the way, every detail, it is the Lord who has kept me. And I really thank God for his grace and uh, giving me the privilege to serve him at a very young age, 21. And even today, by God's grace, I continue to serve because it is all because of this enabling grace and nothing else. And so all glory to God. And so I want to leave with you this verse that is my life verse in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And this is um, the, the, the verse that the Apostle Paul has given. And I make it my life verse. And may the Lord bless all of us, all of you as you hear the testimony. And remember to glorify God because I believe that each one of you have also a testimony to share of how the Lord has been good to you, how the Lord has kept you, brought you to Himself and kept you to this day. So keep praising Him, serving Him, and glorifying His name. Praise the Lord!